Mwalimu Njuguna started his farm with a quarter acre piece of land in 1982. His original home was in Thika district. He got inspired to start farming when he visited his friend there who was doing dairy farming by the zero grazing method. With a teaching career at the time, he bought two cows. He'd get about 4.3 liters of milk, which he'd go and sell to his fellow teachers at Ainsworth Primary School, now Pumwani Primary School in Nairobi, at two shillings per pint. This would earn him about 60 shillings per day, which covered his transport cost to and from his workplace. His workmates encouraged him to produce more so that they can take some of the milk back to their families. From the sale of the milk, he bought more cows, hence increased production. In a period of 12 years, his herd of cows increased from the initial two to about 60 cows. He started supplying milk to areas in Nairobi that included Isili and Pangani. He would buy leftover food from Gikomba market to use as feed for his cows. The food included leftover peas, carrots and maize. Within this period, he started buying land, quarter acre pieces around his first plot. Currently, he owns seven plots in total. Between 1987 to 1994, he got a contract from United Nations Environmental Program UNEP Gigiri to supply 100 liters per day. The price was about 7 shillings and 50 cents per liter. In 1994, he resigned as a teacher at the age of 50. He went to Ahiti Kabete to do a course in artificial insemination and animal health and subsequently became an inseminator from 1995 to date. In 1988, he got in contact with an American called Dill Darling who was working with Worldwide Sires. He taught Mwalimu Njuguna about specializing and Mwalimu accordingly started. At the same time, he bought 60 cows and so selected 40 cows and sold the other 20. From that time, he's been maintaining a herd of 40 cows. By cutting the number down to 20 by 2012, he will manage to reduce the operational cost as well as labor costs and manage to get a sufficient amount of fodder for the cows, less stress and more money for the enterprise. In 2003, Mwalimu was recommended and sponsored for a six-month course at St. Paul's University, Minnesota, USA on a fodder management, calf rearing, and milk processing course. When he came back, he practiced what he learned and also started teaching others about such skills as fodder management and silaging. This gained him good media attention from virtually all of the major media houses. He even got opportunities to teach these farming practices in other countries such as Burundi and Rwanda. NGOs would also send people to his farm to learn from him. People from Ghana, Cameroon, Spain and even the Netherlands including the ambassador have in the past been sent to his farm to visit and learn from him. Noting that it is now more expensive to start a business such as his, he however advises one not to take big loans which would be difficult to repay. To illustrate how expensive it has now become, he said that the milking machine used to be 60,000 shillings. It is now 400,000 shillings. His dairy farming business was self-financed from the beginning. To finance the purchases, he sells heifers at about 150,000 Kenya shillings. He predicts that in 2012 he might be able to sell them at about 200,000 shillings. The male cattle that his cows give birth to are given away after seven days of birth, that is, on the eighth day to the farmers who want to keep them. He gives them away for free. According to him, not many survive to maturity and that is the reason he does so. It is important to note that the milk production of two cows is about 40 liters per day. Mwalimu buys hay from the airport. He gets six tons of hay on each trip. In total, he spends 6,000 shillings for the hay, payment for the driver and fuel costs. This hay would increase production of milk by about 40 liters per day. He sells 250 liters to the Muramati Cooperative Society at 23 shillings and 50 cents per liter, while to the surrounding community, 
he sells the milk at 35 shillings per liter. After coming back from the course he took at St. Paul's in USA, he started processing milk in the farm. This venture, however, became too expensive and with little experience he stopped it. He now earns about 180,000 shillings per month. Some of the challenges he faces include prevention and treatment of animal diseases. During the dry season, fodder becomes hard and expensive to get. There is also a need to silage. He has now managed to keep the surplus in his underground silos and on other quarter acre plots. His farm suffered during the post-election violence in 2008. He was producing the milk but couldn't sell it due to the political unrest. He is also uneasy about the restlessness of the workers. That's right. How do we see that today? <laughs> but full time are five. Three full time, three the cash was myself and my wife. So when I'm here, things run well. When I'm not here, things don't run well. Disposal of manure is especially a problem in the wet season. In one month, they collect about 10 to 20 tons of manure. That becomes a big problem if there is no place to dispose the manure. The price of milk at the cooperative used to be 28 shillings per litre before it went down to 19 shillings at the time that milk was being poured. The cooperative pays the farmers at the end of the month for all the milk that they supplied. Operational costs are also high for such items as concentrates. Mwalimu Njuguna does not keep financial records of the dairy farming business since the cooperative does that already. The cooperative keeps the records of liters of milk sold on each day and at what price. He however maintains a record of each cow on carts which are kept in a file. Each cow on his farm is tagged on the ear with its cow number. In terms of government support, all the government has done is just send people to his farm to give vaccinations. Walimu is a member of the Kiambu Dairy Cooperative since 1982 when he started the dairy farming. He benefits by access to credit facilities. However, he has never taken a loan from this cooperative. The benefits he has received from this enterprise include exposure through the media. He has also received many visitors on his farm, academic visitors, during research and even other farmers who would like to learn from him. He has been sponsored for courses like the one in USA. Malimu advises patients in farming. The farmers also need to be open and truthful to each other. This encourages unity, synergy as well as being able to learn from each other. He insists on proper timekeeping. Time to milk is time to milk. Time to give AI is time to give AI. The cows are programmed to expect these things at standard times. Keeping animals secure also keeps him secure. Walimu avoids feeding his workers. He however gives them a liter of milk per day. He insists on frequent checking of the animals. By seeing them in the morning, it's easy to note which animals got sick or on heat during the night and hence one is able to arrange for treatment or artificial insemination on that day. It is also important to keep good relationships, especially with workmen and neighbors. Should anything happen, without good relationships, the workmen can easily steal the milk or even collude to sell the milk. The situation is even worse if we are not around. Good relations include paying workers well and in time.